Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss important questions of distillation, which are mostly asked in an interview. If you know the answer to any question, please comment in the comment box. And if you like my video, please like, comment, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Chemical Idda. So let's see the questions. What is the meaning of Q in distillation? The Q is a measure of the thermal condition of the feet. So Q is defined as the number of moles of saturated liquid resulting in the stripping section for each mole of feed introduced. Hence a factor Q is introduced to calculate the change in phase flow rates by the introduction of feed. The value of Q for any particular feed condition can be calculated from the following relation. Q is equal to energy to convert one mole of feed to saturated vapor divided by molar latent heat of vaporization. Now next question. What are the values of Q for various thermal conditions of the feed? So the values of Q for various thermal conditions of the feed are if the feed is cold liquid then the values of Q is greater than 1. If the feed is saturated liquid then the values of Q is equal to 1. If feed is partially vapor or partially flashed, that is vapor liquid mixture, then the values of Q greater than 0 or less than 1. If the feed is saturated vapor feed or feed is at a dew point, then Q is equal to 0. And if the feed is superheated vapor, then Q is less than 0. Now next question. What is the Q-line or feed-line equation? The feed-line or Q-line equation is Y is equal to minus Q divided by 1 minus Q into X plus XF divided by 1 minus Q. This is the equation of the feed-line which passes through the point XF XF on the diagonal and has a slope of minus q divided by 1 minus q. Now next question. What is the position of q line or feed line for various feed conditions? The position feed line or q line for various feed conditions is shown in figure. The position of feed line or q line depend on the nature of feed and then value of Q such that as we know for cold liquid the values of Q is greater than 1 hence the feed line passes through the point XF XF on the diagonal and has a slope of minus Q divided by 1 minus Q next for saturated liquid that is liquid at bubble point the values of Q is equal to 1. Hence we get slope is equal to infinity. And hence, the feed line for saturated liquid, that is liquid at bubble point, is parallel to Y axis. Through the point XF, XF on the diagonal. Then for partially vaporized liquid, the values of Q is greater than 0 and less than 1. Hence the feed line passes through the point XF XF on the diagonal and has a slope of minus Q divided by 1 minus Q. Then for saturated vapor, the values of Q is equal to 0. Hence we get slope is equal to 0. And hence the feed line is parallel to the X axis through the point XF XF on the diagonal. Then for superheated vapor, the values of Q is less than 0. 
tends the feed line as passes through the point XF XF on the diagonal. Now next question. What are the assumption McCabe Thiel method? It is a graphical procedure of obtaining theoretical plates. The assumptions made in this method are constant molar heat of vaporization, no heat losses, no heat of mixing. Now next question. What are the limitations of McCabe Thiel method? So, the limitations of McCabe Thiel method are it is not used when the relative volatility is less than 1.3 or greater than 5. It is not used when more than 25 theoretical stages plates are required. It is not used when the operating reflux ratio is less than 1.1 times the minimum reflux ratio. Now next question. Define reflux. So, the part of the condensed liquid returning to the top of the column is called as reflux. As in this figure we can see, a part of the condensed liquid is returned to the column and the remaining part is withdrawn as the top product or distillate, which is rich in the more volatile component. Hence a part of the condensed liquid is returned to the column is called as reflux. Now next question. What is the reflux ratio? So, reflux ratio is the ratio of molar flow rate of liquid returned to the top of column as reflux to the molar flow rate distillate. It is denoted by R. Hence from definition mathematically R can be written as R is equal to L divided by D. Where L is moles per time of liquid returned to the top of column as reflux. D is moles per time of distillate. R is reflux ratio. Now next question. What is infinite or total reflux ratio? So, total reflux ratio is one of the limiting values of the reflux ratio. At total reflux, the product withdrawal rate is zero and the total reflux operation is necessary only to know the minimum number of plates required. A column operating under total reflux is shown in figure. In this case, an enough material is charged to the distillation assembly and the column is operated under total reflux. During the operation of the column, the vapor issuing from the top is condensed and all the condensed stream is fed back to the column as reflux. Also all the liquid going to the reboiler is vaporized and is fed to the column as the total product withdrawal rate is zero. Hence we can say at total reflux F that is feed is equal to zero. D that is distillate is equal to zero and W that is withdrawn is equal to zero. So, for a desired degree of separation, at total reflux condition, minimum number of stages are required. Because as F and D is equal to zero, due to this, the slope of the operating lines of both sections becomes unity and hence the operating lines of both sections coincide with the diagonal and the minimum number of stages are then required for a desired degree of separation. The total reflux operation corresponds to a maximum reboiler heat supply and condenser cooling capacity for the separation because at total reflux ratio the product withdrawn rate is zero and the number of stages decreases and hence liquid and vapor hold up will be increased 
And due to this reboiler heat supply and condenser cooling capacity will be maximum. Now next question. What is the minimum reflux ratio? The minimum reflux ratio is that reflux ratio at which an infinite number of plates are required for a desired separation. At the minimum reflux ratio required heat supply for reboiler and coolant supply for condenser are minimum. Hence the minimum reboiler and condenser sizes are required. Now next question. What is the optimum reflux ratio? The optimum reflux ratio is defined as it is that reflux ratio at which the total cost of operation that is the sum of the fixed charges and the cost of heating and cooling is minimum. The optimum reflux ratio usually lies in the range of 1.1 to 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio. Now next question. What is the effect of reflux ratio on number of stages? So, as the reflux ratio is increased, the number of plates decreases. At total reflux, the operating lines coincide with the diagonal. And to effect a desired separation, number of stages required are minimum. As the reflux ratio is reduced, the operating lines move towards the equilibrium curve along the feed line and the number of stages increases. If we further reduce reflux ratio which results into a condition wherein the top operating line touches the equilibrium curve, the point of intersection of operating lines lies on the equilibrium curve and at this point step become very close together so that a zone of nearly constant composition is formed near the feed plate and an infinite number of plates are then required hence at the minimum reflux ratio an infinite number of plates are required for a desired separation at total reflux means infinite reflux ratio the minimum number of plates required which is equal to nm any reflux ratio between infinite reflux ratio requiring a minimum number of plates and minimum reflux ratio requiring an infinite number of plates is a workable system which requires finite stages for desired degree of separation now next question what is the effect of reflux ratio on cost of distillation so as we know at minimum reflux ratio as infinite number of plates are required hence the fixed cost is also infinite while the cost of heat supply to the reboiler and condenser coolant is minimum as the reflux ratio is increased the number of plates decreases and the fixed cost decreases at first then passes through a minimum and then increases as with a higher reflux ratio the diameter of the column and sizes of the reboiler and condenser increases the operating cost increases continuously with reflux ratio at total reflux Total the number of plates are minimum. The cost of heat supply to reboiler and condenser coolant is maximum. And also large capacity. Because liquid and vapor hold up as large. So that's all about. Important questions on distillation. In the next video. We will discuss. Another set of questions. If you like my video, 
Please like my video. Share this video with your friends. And subscribe to my YouTube channel.